this series started out um, as a continuation of painting with encaustics, which I have done for about 15 years. In the last couple of years, I uh, have started drawing a lot, uh, sort of a default um, aspect to me making things. Um, it wasn't, drawing hasn't been something that, that really consumed me in terms of a concept or an idea or something that I wanted to pursue. Uh, it's more response to the fact that since I've moved back to Alexandria and since I've started teaching at the, some of the colleges and universities there part-time, um, it seems to me like something that was sorely needed that wasn't being provided. It wasn't provided for me as I was coming through there. And then I would have students coming up to me and asking me questions about um, would I go to the administration of schools and, and get them some figure drawing classes instilled, installed. Um, to which I said no, because if I do that, I'm just gonna be in trouble with the administration and you're still not gonna have your figure drawing classes. Uh, so a group of students for the last couple of years have been coming to my studio and we've been drawing quite regularly. So my uh, exhibiting the figure has, has really sprang out of, out of those kids coming to me with, with other motives for wanting to do that. Um, I haven't painted with the encaustics in quite a while, even though I like it a lot. Um, and when I went back to this, my actual first idea was to just incorporate some of those, some of those issues that I was in, um, dealing with with the drawings. This one actually does still have that in there. It has that picture down at the bottom, which um, came from. I have to explain a little bit of backstory. Uh, our library, my library, which is right around the corner from where I work, um, puts out books that are have been deemed uh, unsaleable. Uh, they're just books that if they don't give them to somebody, they're going to go in the trash. I love these books because uh, what they typically are when I go in there are 1940s and 50s technical manuals and other things like that that I really uh, respond quite quickly and quite favorably to the imagery in there. I like them. Uh, I think they're, they're weird, they're unique, and that um, for me, it sort of harkened back to the idea of something like this with an anatomical drawing of a, a figure, and then to, to heavy-handedly say, okay, this is a muse for me, um, it's just that. It's just that, you know, if, if um, I wanted to draw in a previous lifetime, uh, my, my sources would have been first and foremost come from books, which I find to be um, a real backwards way of approaching uh, new concepts, but there it is. Um, also, when I started this, I was gonna try and incorporate more of the idea of figure drawing and all the things that it references, uh, body and uh, body as a vessel, body as a vehicle, body as, as all sorts of, of, of um, incorporating you know who we are. Um, but what started to happen really quickly was a lot of, I was using the, only one of them still made it, which was that skeletal form. Um, I had lots and lots of them that had skeletal forms and, and other stuff in them. Um, and I felt like it was it was really negative, it was really dark, it was really, black sort of imagery that I didn't want to put out there. So I, I pulled back a little bit from that. Uh, the other aspect of it was because I haven't gone back and done the encaustics for some time, there were lots of things that I felt like I could explore that I hadn't done before in terms of uh, just physical manipulating the waxes and putting those things down there. Um, you know, and, and the last, I guess, is, you know, when I look at these things, they are, they certainly do have uh, narrative aspects to them, but by the time they are finished, uh, there's such a juxtaposition of, of disparaging ideas that, you know, I like that weird juxtaposition of images that don't quite make sense to each other, images that, uh, by putting them together, create more problems, create more questions than it certainly does in terms of solving any sort of, of statement. Um, so there it is. Talk a little bit about the time frame it takes to, to complete one of these pieces. 
They can vary, but the the normal working process is that they go on very thin layers, lots and lots of very thin layers. So the pieces can take uh, sometimes might have, you know, it takes days to do any of them. So part of that whole process too is, is that when I'm doing this, the studio is just filled and I go from one to another to another back and forth trying to get all of them uh, to put the attention to them. Uh, also, this ses session, the last right before the show, uh, as everybody is aware, we had that heat wave that was so awful. Well, my studio is a, 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 an attic space. So I was going up there at nighttime and at eight o'clock at night, it was still 110 degrees in the studio. Uh, and it, it changed the way that the, the waxes went together. Uh, I could do things with them in terms of building some really thick surfaces, like this one right here that um, you know, I hadn't been able to do before. I haven't, uh, the wax would stay soft in that environment and it wasn't until I brought them downstairs and actually let them cool that, that they would look the way they were gonna look. Um, there were also things about doing it in that type of, um, of heat where things like when I painted on the side of this, the, the wax would stay so wet so long that it would wick up in that fabric, which was um, a little bit different. You know, normally if I wanted to do that, I would have had to have tried really hard uh, by putting heat from a heat gun to get this effect that was coming around really easily. So there was a lot of things about the physical process of painting that were that were unique even to me for this at this stage of doing this this long. So that aspect of it was really interesting and fun. This remind, these uh, pictures remind me of patterns of, uh, you know, like the uh, butter whip patterns mm -hmm. and all, so in, you know, and the uh, farms that they used to, to uh, sew with. And do, do you use fabric for the background or is that some kind of paper that you put and then uh, put the wax over it? And is that material that you wrapped around there and then put the wax on top? Or? Uh, correct on both of those counts. There, there are uh, wallpaper patterns in the background. There are, I don't think I have any fabric in these, but uh, it certainly would be something that I like using. And the imagery as well. I go back to, you know, some of my favorite things. I, I love, I love dance. I love, and so those references are always running through my head. Um, but the, even though that might not necessarily be what they're about, it certainly plays into what they are. Mm -hmm. I was hoping you, you would talk a little bit more about meaning. I'm looking at them and they seem like they're really loaded and I can start to interpret them. But um, is that something that's important to you um, to have us um, take something away from it? Um, are you communicating to us or um, Maybe you could elaborate a little bit. Well, I, I hope that there's a communication going on there. I certainly, I know that in, in trying to prepare an artist statement for this show, talk about the idea that, that I really enjoy the, if there's alternate interpretations that people can look at them and bring their own stories and fill in stories, fill in part portions of the story that they change and mature and, uh, I think that's a really attractive thing to me. Do I want all of it to come through? You know, it's not really necessary. These things are, um, even though I feel like I did take out some of the the, the more macabre imagery, um, they're still pretty dark. I, they're, you know, I'm, here I am 15 years into my midlife crisis and some of these are about that stuff. Um, so yeah, I, I enjoy, I hope that they become more, you know, with, with the people who look at them, the people who view them, the people that uh, deal with them, that they, they even expand and become more than they were when I turned them loose. Is this applause meant for like somebody creating a fashion or could it be applied to the dance, like applause for the dance? Like ballet, that looks like ballet. Both, it's, it's all there. The, the idea of applause um, 
for these were, you know, I started out with these bookended things that, um, you know, if nobody else congratulated me on the latest body of work, I was going to make sure I did it for myself. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and the idea of, of that form and that particular thing, uh, it's just been an idea that I've played with for a long time. So to have it come together like that, uh, again, lots of various layers to, to every, every aspect of it. You have three little circles, like, like indentations. Mm -hmm. And you've got four over there. Does it have a meaning? Uh, Yes and no. I mean, if, if, you know, anytime I put three things up there and like we can talk about a trinity or if I put four, I'll talk about somebody else's belief system or if I put seven, we'll, you know, we'll keep going right down the line. But, um, you know, I think the repetitive aspect of it and, and again, I think that, you know, calling those, calling certain numbers into question will give people uh, a, a, something to grab onto and something to look for, something to take out there with it. Um, for me, I like repetitive motions. I like repetitive actions. Um, you know, I collect these images that I get from my library. I've had these things as part of my my space for for years now. I look at them all the time. So I just keep waiting for waiting for a reason for them to assemble themselves. What about the boxes, Preston? You you use boxes quite often. You build these boxes, and then you uh, yeah. When I start to put things together, a lot of times um, the the form of what contains it will will sort of dictate where I go with them and how they come together. Um, you know, I didn't put these things together like these. This is three separate pieces that each of those boxes box forms were. You know, originally nothing more than a, a vehicle to hold wax and to hold paint and to to get started with it. Um, but um, the structure of putting those things together is again, I find it's part of the way I work. I tend to work, do things in series. Um, you know, if doing it one time is good, then doing it a hundred times is going to be way better. And a thousand times, well, you can't. I can't really think out past that because. Generally, by the time I get a few of these into there, the work changes. It, it becomes something else. Um, I find, and I guess that's pretty common, uh, but you know, being in the studio uh, creates its own changes. Work makes work, and uh, it's a process that I really enjoy. It's a process I don't get to do enough, but nearly enough of. Um, you know, my studio time has become um, so precious to me because I, I don't have a lot of it. So the boxes are just a means of, you know, I find it, I can go in there and start building boxes and think about what goes in them as opposed to start trying to make things and then figure a way to frame them. 